superstar. He is an absolute superstar, Tom Mitchell. Chris at the back. Chris is too good. Neil, 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 yes! Oh, how good was that? G'day, guys. Um, welcome to a Ball Magnets podcast. Um, my absolute pleasure to introduce Adam Saad. Um, we call him brother. Uh, he's a good man. He's uh, he's got a lot of experience. Um, you know, we love him at the, at the club. He's got a lot of knowledge that we're going to tap into today and tell his story a bit. So we'll get into it, Sadi. Um, thanks for coming on, brother. No, thanks um, for having me, bro. Appreciate it. No, it's uh, it's a big effort to get you here. Um, <laughs> now we're going to talk about first before we're going to talk about a lot of things today. But first, one I want to tap into is um, you know a lot of sort of young athletes sort of aspire to play AFL. Um, you know, their whole goal. Um, in either AFL, AFLW, to get drafted at 18. Um, that didn't happen for you. You were a mature age. You got um, missed out on a couple of drafts. Was it yep. one or two drafts? Yeah, three, three national drafts. and two rookies, yeah. Yeah, so yep. three, so five drafts all up yep. over the space of three years. Um, played VFL, kept working on it. Um, was lucky enough to get picked up at the start of the Gold Coast and then got to Essendon now to the Baggers. The Baggers. Um, maybe just sort of touch on you know the challenges you face, but also um, you know, your journey to get to on the AFL list. Yep. So obviously, as as we grow up, you know, you're a six, seven year old living in the northern suburbs, and mate, my dream was to play AFL footy. Um, I looked up to my dad and my uncles; that's all they did, and they were pretty good at what they did as well. So, um, coming through the ranks, made TAC Cup on the 18s. Um, I had an okay year. Went to the draft combine, spoke to a few clubs there, and then yeah, obviously didn't eventuate. So I'm 18 years old, didn't get drafted on the the rookie draft or the national draft so um just thinking to myself sort of what's next um you know i feel like a lot of kids especially sort of maybe in my community maybe miss out on that first year or maybe even that second year and they just sort of give it away but um we understand as muslims that everything happens for a reason and god has a plan for us and um god always gave me that belief that one day it'll become reality and um Missing, tw- uh, missing 2012 and then hurting my meniscus. So that, that following year, I just got dropped a few times. I played as development league back then. Yeah. Played half the games in seniors and half the games in development league. And so, so you got dropped from VFL? Yeah, dropped VFL. Yeah. So I, was, I wasn't I was in the senior team sort of, or for half the year I wasn't. Um, and yeah, there were there was some you know dark days during that time. But um, at the same time, you know those experiences and those things that you go through, you, you learn from those and, and yeah. you, you better yourself as a player and as a person. and. Um, yeah, in 2014, Peter German came to Coburg, new coach. Yeah. Um, no affiliation with Richmond, so it was just a standalone. And um, I went from, you know, forward pocket, like outside mid to a halfback flanker. Taking hangers. To, <laughs> trying to get off that Coburg City over. But um, no, we just changed my spot to halfback to, to play to my strengths, run and carry, break the lines, um, use my foot skills and, and use my speed. So at the end of that year, yeah, I got lucky enough to... Uh, to get drafted to to Gold Coast, and um, it's been a journey since it's my, I'm entering my ninth year. I've played over 150 games. Yeah. Um, I'm just very privileged and honoured to to be on an AFL list. I'm so grateful, and um, to be at, at Carlton now, it's a, it's a really exciting phase. Um, a lot of hard work ahead, but I feel like this next few years we can you know do something special. That's the plan, mate. I uh, I remember my first year in the VFL. We played against each other. It was the Northern Blues versus uh, Coburg. It was at Preston City yeah. Over, I'm pretty sure. Um, don't back know, in those days, you man. Don't that game. No, but okay. um, now I'll, I'll we'll get back on the footy journey. But um, something you're really passionate about, you started up, is the Adam Sard Academy. Yep. Um, do you want to elaborate more on that and um, the whole reason you sort of started yep. that up and um, you know why you had sort of passion behind yep. sort of that phase of um, what you do? I feel like we're in a privileged position to to be giving back to the community and to um, help out wherever we can. Because, you know, growing up, we didn't have these pathways or programs and um, it's the Adam Saad pathways and we've got programs underneath that. So we're running, you know, five programs a year. Um, the whole intention of the of the academy is to, you know, help develop these young um, males and females, 12 to 15, and hopefully like a 15 to 18 year old age group to, to be good people, to be role models in their community, um, in their household, to have good character, um, Firstly, it's been that it's having that good character and being a good person, and then developing into athletes and footy players as well. So, um, you know, you might not change everyone's life, but if we can make a difference in one or two or ten or twenty, but um, I feel like it's it's really growing. Um, 
having the right intention, having the right staff around you. Yeah. Um, and you know, people relate to me. I'm obviously a Lebanese Muslim, and obviously it's a multicultural academy. So um, I love doing it. It's a passion of mine. We're yeah. in a position to give back, and um, I feel like it's it's a duty for me to to do that. And um, yeah, it's hard to explain when you're just so passionate and it just comes so natural. Like I, I love giving back and helping, and yeah. Um, yeah, making a difference where I can. And with um, so you sort of that's the fifteen to eighteen year old sort of the the age group you sort of you're targeting. Is that yeah so, yeah? So we're it's twelve to fifteen year old now, and hopefully in the next couple of years we'll do a fifteen to eighteen. Yeah, awesome. We just got to build the foundations on the other programs, um, and it's it's a six week program. We um we do footy element, and then we do a, a leadership element. So yeah, goal setting, team values, um, cultural awareness, nutrition. Yeah. So it's, it's a bit of both. It's not just you know going out there and, and training. It's it's more education and and the footy part as well. So um, well, we've been doing it for two. It's the third year at the club, and yeah. it's really developing. We've we've got a couple of big sponsors on board now. So yeah. and how many um, with it? So how much of, of like your week does that take up? Well, yeah, um, there's a lot of like there's a lot of logistics and stuff behind the scenes. Um, Hamza Hamza Ali is the program manager. Yeah. Um, we're just on the phone almost every day, just you know, organizing things, whether it be uniform or equipment, or you know, writing the schedule for the six-week program, and then going on to you know, the Ramadan dinner and then the high-performance camp. There's there's so much that goes into a behind the scenes. Um, it's once a week for six weeks for the academy. There's yeah. then there's the Ramadan dinner for one night, and yeah. then we got the high-performance camp, which goes for three days, yeah. and then um, yeah, the um, the schools cup, which goes for a day, um, and. Uh, as we said, as I said before, I just love doing it. So yeah. time is, is, you know, time is crucial and time is money. But um, I feel like we're doing it for, for the right reasons and the right intentions. And um, But there is a lot of hard work. And I'll give a shout out to Hamza, who's, who's been awesome, who's yeah. elevated this, these programs. And um, hopefully we just keep getting better and better. Yeah, I think um, the position we're in, like it's like you said, like we get so much, yeah. there's so many good people around us, so many good experiences. Um, yeah. You know, like you said, nutrition, high performance, uh, weights, it's just, even that age group from 12 to 18, like it's such yeah. an important age of um, your life and you want to have fun um, doing everything you do. Yeah. But um, I think we're in a position we can share as much sort of yeah. knowledge that we've learned along the way and pass it on to sort of the next sort of, I suppose, not generation, but next crew coming yeah. through. It's so important. And um, yeah. like you said, if you're, if you're doing things for, for others, it gives you so much joy when you do yeah. it. Um, probably elaborate more on footy now, mate. Like, um, what well I last year, all Australian half back. No, it was a great night. Thanks, um, it was a huge achievement. I knew you were super pumped to, to, yeah. to get that. Um, mate, like the things that stand out for me with you is, um, you know, quick, pound for pound champ for the club. <laughs> you know, elaborate, we'll elaborate on that soon. Yeah. Um, your kicking skills. Um, and the other one is, um, you know, you bounce every two metres. Um, you probably uh, lap the whole competition <laughs> of bounces in total. Um, we'll start with sort of your kicking. Like, um, I feel like the stuff you do with the ball. Um, your ball control, um, the stuff you do when it's on the ground level, um, not many people can do. Like, does that a lot of that stuff come naturally, or is it something you've sort of worked on, um, you know, as you progress yeah. through your career? Um, I think I think it's sort of a, a natural ability. At the same time, I've I've do my craft and I've put in a lot of practice and a lot of time and effort into it. But um, with my kicking, I always felt like I've had a good kick, and it's not up until two years ago where I've really you know hooked around my body and hitting those short forty fives and. Um, yeah, it takes a lot of practice and takes you know, sometimes I'm out on the field and saying why the hell am I going to kick it there but because yeah. I practice so much and it just comes it's an instinct for me it sort of just comes off but um, I really pride myself on being clean with the footy yeah. ground level handball and kicking marking um, and so I practice a fair bit of stuff at the club just taking one handers and um, it's all these little things and, and even just taking the ground ball at speed yeah um, all those little one percenters that makes a big difference. I feel, um, yeah. and if you if you're clean with the footy, mate, you're just efficient and you're helping the team, you know, on offense. And um, yeah, I feel like I'm efficient when I get the ball. Oh, mate, you reckon you got the best kick in the comp. So um, <laughs> yeah, here now, I'll give it back to you, mate. You know how that works. <laughs> Look after each other. But um, always, yeah. no, you do a great job. Um, we always have a laugh about how much you bounce. Uh, some of you sort of walk out of the. The, uh, the 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 kick in square and you take a bounce yeah. before you even take two steps. Um, I know you you like it because it feels like it um, gives you composure. Yeah. Um, you know, sort of elaborate sort of more on that for yeah. everyone. No, I've been asked so many times why I bounce so much. It it just comes so naturally. Like I walk out and like you mentioned, it's the composure thing for me. Um, take two steps, bounce, look up, see the field. 
um, and then try hit a target. But sometimes I don't realize I'm bouncing that much. Yeah. That um, yeah, it's I've been doing it since I was a young kid, and um, it's a skill that I've I've tried perfecting over the years. Um, and yeah, it's that composure, like get the ball, take what, a second or two seconds to to look up and try hit a target. Yeah. But um, there's nothing much more with it. Like I, I love to run and carry and bring excitement to to the fans and the supporters, but. Yeah. Um, I'm a change player to when I first started. When I first started, I was just you know, trying to take anyone on and running, you know, a quarter of the field with the ball. But I feel like I've matured a fair bit since then. So um, yeah, it's just that composure side. That's why I do it so much. Yeah, I reckon um, an underrated sort of. Um, I feel like your, your speed and your skill sort of everyone sort of highlights that. I reckon um, one thing that goes a bit unnoticed is how good you are in sort of one on one sort of contest, yeah. especially especially deep towards goal. Like you always find yourself in that position against some of the best small forwards. Um, how much work do you sort of put into off those small forwards, but also as you, your career sort of progressed, um, what's made you be so good in those one-on-one sort of yeah. uh, contests, do you reckon? I feel like it's just the, the, the mindset to, to hate losing. I hate getting beaten and mate, if my opponent gets a kick, I get really frustrated. But um, for me, it's just I don't want to let my teammates and my coaches down and having a really balanced approach then... Um, just finding a way to get the ball to ground and, and then trying to rebound off that. But um, I do my oppo analysis and I make sure I know what their strengths are, you know, what, what foot they kick with, um, their patterns from stoppages. Um, and when it's in a contest, I feel like I've got enough strength to get that ball to ground and then rebound off that. But um, yeah, a lot of people think my strength is my speed and, and kicking, but I feel like my one-on-one and my defense is just as strong as my offensive side. So um, it's that attitude and that mindset to just hate losing and I hate getting beaten so um, get that ball to ground just find a way even if you're on a, a key forward just for that one contest just try to find a way to get to ground so yeah. now you are pretty strong um, for those of you listening in I knew um, this was coming so Sadi walks around the whole uh, club and calls himself the pound for pound champ um, the, uh, the reason behind that so we do like a, a strength um, to weight ratio um, so basically who can lift the most the most sort of weight based on um, their kilograms and body weight. Um, and Saudi's are uh, taking home the title. Um, yeah, the last two years, which is, <laughs> it's, it's been good. So. Pound for pound champ. He, uh, he loves his UFC. So there's a big, big fight coming up in a, in a, in a week and a half. <laughs> yeah. You know, Kurt, who we got uh, Volk versus uh, Islam. Islam. Yeah, it's going to be a big fight. But who, who are you picking, mate? I think Islam, I reckon. Just on, on the floor, too much pressure. Probably get it done on decision, but. Um, elaborating on the pound for pound, yeah, we should make a title, I reckon, like hang it up on the wall or something. Just um, put a lot more recognition into it. So, no, I'll take, I, I do, I, I walk around the, the gym, have a lot of laughs about it, but um, I have gotten stronger since I, I left Essendon and got to Carlton. So, um, I have to hang on something. I have to, you know, um, make fun of the boys about something. So, I just use it for the yearly round. That's good, mate. So, I reckon you are, uh, if you're a, sort of young athlete from 12 to sort of 18, that sort of male or female, sort of the experiences that you've sort of learned along your journey to where you are now, obviously being the Australian halfback. If you could give sort of three main points of advice to yep. sort of that sort of age demographic, what would they be, do you reckon? Um, I reckon the first one's just the sacrifice that you have to use, the sacrifice you have to make um, as a person, like time management, who you're spending time with, um, like what you're spending your time on, um, you know, the, the food that you're eating, the sleep, how much sleep you're getting um, and just using your energy wisely. I feel like, you know, making AFL and, and playing league footy, you can't really hang out with mates until 11 o'clock or play PlayStation or eat your junk food every single night. This doesn't work. So the sacrifices that you have to make. Um, so that's probably the first one. Um, the second one is just hard work, yeah. working hard, um, having an intention for every session, getting something out of every session. Um, walking off the field or the craft session or wherever it is, just knowing that you've improved on a certain area of your game. Yeah. Um, and I feel like maybe the last one, I think just always have, just always remind yourself and put things in perspective, that humility yeah. and gratitude piece. Yeah. Um, no matter where you are in the world or no matter your situation, there's always someone worse off. Yeah. Um, if you've got a roof over your head, if you've got food on the table, if you've got health and your, and your family's healthy as well mate. you've got pretty much everything so always have a gratitude piece always be humble um you know have a smile on your face be a good person um 
and it goes a long way. Like that's I try to remind myself every time I wake up in the morning that um, I've got a I've got legs that I can use, I've got hands that I can use, I've got a mouth that I can talk with, I've got eyes that I can see with, um, I've got ears that I can hear with, and I'm I'm saying that because there's people out there that have all that but they can't use them. Yeah. People that can't see, they can't hear, they can't use their legs. Like just stripping it right back and being really grateful for. Yeah everything that we have and especially the health like being healthy and just being really happy which is the most important yeah no i definitely um i think that's something you've really sort of brought to the club since you come and that, that gratitude piece and i know you're a massive family man and um the last thing i want to touch on is um you know your your religion and, and yeah. how passionate you are about that and um yeah do you want to sort of elaborate yeah. on, on sort of things you do for that i know a lot of the gratitude comes yeah. from comes, comes from that and, yeah. um you know we've learned a lot about yeah. sort of your culture and religion and yeah of, um, yeah, it's great to learn that and also see how you, um, yeah. the things you do during the week that um, yeah. you know make you you. It's um, my religion's a it's a way of life. It's not sort of those don't pick and choose. But obviously, we're not perfect. But um, you know, as Muslims, we pray five times a day. Um, obviously, I pray the, the the morning prayer and the last prayer at at the mosque in congregation, and we get there's a lot of reward in that. Um, you know, we've got five pillars of Islam. We got we we got fasting in Ramadan, which I've touched on. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's sort of hard to explain when something means so much to you and in orders of priority, like that's number one. Um, my family's a close, really close second. Um, obviously footy third, but um, it teaches me all sorts of, you know, be having good character and how to live your life as a person and um, just to never lose hope. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like, like I mentioned, it, it's, um, I've, early on in my career, I was, um, you know, a bit shy and a bit, um, you know, reserved. But I feel like uh, I've come to the club and just having those honest conversations, speaking to Vossi, speaking to, to the skip, um, speaking to all the boys and, and just, you know, educating them about sort of what I do. Every Friday, we, we it's called Jamal prayer. So we go yeah. every Friday, we, we go to the mosque and there's a lecture and, and we pray. Um, and yeah, I just let Vossi and, and Andrew Russell know that um, after going now, I'll be an hour and they, they fully support and trust yeah. me. So, um yeah, it's um, I know there's there's a lot of things that are said about Muslims around the world, but we um, you know, we're normal people, like we love having a laugh. I yeah. think I'm, I'm like I'm a I'm a jokester, but um, just always coming back to the to our core values and just being a good person and helping out wherever you can. So, but it's it's a way of life. It's the way I live my life. Um, sort of telling people, and it may sound like there's heaps in it, but because I do it every single day, it just comes second nature. Yeah. But um, yeah, that that's sort of who I am, and I've I continue to try to grow as a person, as a Muslim. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I don't see myself as a role model, but you know, if kids do look up to me, hopefully, I'm making the right example for them. No, you're doing a great job, mate. It's um, we've actually been around Sadi's family place for a, yeah. for a barbecue. Um, cooked up a big feed, which is we all get about ten of the boys around, which is good. <laughs> yep. Um, you go down to any sort of Carlton Open training, you got half the crowd with the, the Sad Army there. Uh, they love him, so he's probably the most popular. Popular player, Carlton, yeah. I reckon. But um, no, no mate, thanks for making time today. I'm sure um, the young athletes listening would have got a lot from it. And um, yeah, let's go again this year, eh, big fella? Thanks, fella. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thanks, mate.